Hello, my name's Eric and welcome to the Big Man's Outdoors. I am working on some loads for my 224 Valkyrie. I have a couple loads that I'm starting to see some results with, some decent results, and I want to recreate them to verify my groupings, make sure that they're consistent and repeatable, and also to shoot them through the chronograph and try and get some velocities, something I have not done, mostly for the reason uh, being that I haven't had a chronograph at my disposal. So I'm just going through my brass prep at the moment. I'm deburring and chanfering. I have about 20 pieces that I'm going to reload this time. Alright, well that part of it's done. Now I'm going to clean out the primer pockets. I do this with every piece of brass that I reload. These are once fired federal factory ammo that I initially started shooting when I got my rifle. I started uh, just poking around with all the available federal ammo that I had and I kept the brass knowing that I wanted to reload. So my process, like I say, is I deburn and chamfer everything and then I clean out the primer pockets on every piece of brass. As always, it's a labor of love, but that's what I do and it's worth it to me. So I'm going to continue doing this and then I will pick back up in a bit once I have this process done and we'll talk about putting primers in and complete the rest of the process. I will be back in a bit. So I've got my brass prepped. It's been deburdened, chamfered, chamfered, and I've cleaned out the primer pocket. Uh, the next step is for me to prime. Uh, I don't have a tumbler. So, to clean my brass, I have a universal decapping die. I take all the spent primers out and then I basically wash them in a solution of water and vinegar and um, dish detergent and some salt. And then I put them in the oven to warm them up, clean them off, or not clean them off, but to dry them out. All right, so. 20 pieces of brass. Uh, I do use Lee uh, pay setter dies for my 224 Valkyrie. Let me get the show how holder out of here. And I am using Winchester small rifle primers for. setting them off. I didn't, was wondering if I had any in there that were already open or not, but it appears I don't. So, let me get them out. And I still prime with a press. I have a RCBS press that I actually got from my father. This was a press that I used to use when I was a kid when I would reload with him. So, I'm going to go ahead and prime these cases so we can get on to the next step of throwing the powder charge. One thing I did want to say is if you get a chance and you haven't been to the Reloaders Network, um, it's a good place to go to get information. One of the things that I did when I started to reload was I had a bunch of questions. It had been a long time since I reloaded. So I had a, a lot of questions. I had a general idea of what to do, but like I said, it had been a long time. So I started searching 
to the internet, as most people do when they have questions about something, for good or bad. And I came across some of the authors that are on that page who make videos, and I learned a lot from them. And part of the reason why I do this, do am doing these videos, is because I guess it's just my way of giving back to the community uh, for helping me learn so much in doing reloading. So, like I said, if you get a chance and you've never been there, go ahead and stop over to the Reloaders Network. Give it a check out and maybe you'll learn something. Uh, I'm going to finish this task at hand and then we'll get set up to throw some powder charges. Okay, so I've got my brass primed and prepped. Now it's time for loading some powder. Um, when I uh, throw powder charges, I have a Lee uh, Perfect Powder Charge thrower, but I still measure every powder charge that I throw. Um, this one's pretty good. It usually throws within plus or minus a tenth of a grain, but I set it to throw a little low, and then I measured on my digital scale. I have a Hornady digital scale that I use to get it, and then once I do that, I double check it on the Lee safety scale, uh, just to make sure that everything is good, and that I'm being extremely precise. First thing I want to do is I need to zero this and make sure that we are zero. I always zero my beam scale before I use it. Every time, just to check. It's just a habit I I like to do. In the meantime, while that's happening, I'm going to throw a couple charges out of this to see where we're at and adjust it down a little bit. I'm using Varget to start with and I'm going to be doing 25.5 grains of Varget um, on my first 10 rounds. So my scale's showing a little light at zero. So I need to change that. And then also what I do is I put the my test charges in my trickler. So I need to increase this a little bit. That was 23.3 grains of powder. Twenty-four point zero. We're getting closer. Double checking my scale. It's looking good. My beam scale is looking good. Let's increase this a little bit. I want to get to about maybe 25 give or take, and then I'll trickle the last half grain of powder in. I found, so there's 25.0. Alright, my beam scale is good. And I always double check my zero, so every time I pour my charge out I set my pan back on and double check my zero on my uh, digital scale to make sure. So let's set to 25.0. Five. Uh, looks good there. For me, I'm going to increase this another click and get a little bit closer to 25 point something. For me, ah, reloading is about getting into a rhythm. And you just get used to doing things. Okay, so that is 25.0 again. So I'm going to trickle in a half a grain. Oop, just a hair too much. Still says a hair too much. 
All right, 25.5 on the digital scale. Let's double check it on the beam, and while that's balancing out, I'll get my next charge ready. 25.0 again, so that's good. It's being consistent. That charge looks just a hair light. So I'm going to trickle this one out. Okay, 25. I'm going to remeasure that charge. See, that went to 25.6. Let's double check it. Yeah. Five point four. Twenty five point five. Okay, we'll hit this one. And I want to re measure that first charge I threw. And sure enough, it, according to this, it's a tenth of a grain light. That's why I always double check for consistency. That one looks good on the beam, so we'll throw that. And put this one on the beam and throw my next charge. Check for zero. Put it in. That says 25.4. So that's why I always double check because I just had a four tenth of a grain difference between my last throw and this throw. Could have been me, but all right. This one's leveled out. Looks good. jump to 25.6 so we're just a hair heavy 25.5 and throw the next charge 25.2 The other thing the beam scale does is it keeps me honest so I don't miss uh, mistake a number and jump for something that I think I should be doing. Beam scale looks good. This one's just a hair heavy again. Check. 25.5 on the digital. And that's my process. So I'm going to continue to do this for my Varget. And then once I get done with that, I'll jump over to Reloader 17. So I will be back when I get to Reloader 17. Okay, so I'm back. I've finished my uh, Varget, and now I'm moving on to Reloader 17. I am going to be loading 25.8 grains of that. So I'm going to reset my safety scale to 25.8. I've seen people say they've had issues with these Lee safety scale. I have not. Um, maybe I got a good one, maybe I got a bad one, I don't know. I do like it. Get my digital scale turned off in the meantime. Let me get that turned back on. So now I'm going to adjust this a little bit. I'm not going from too much. I'm going from 25.5 to 25.8 so I don't have to adjust my uh, micrometer that much to get the difference. So let's go ahead and throw a couple. Oop, need to turn it on. That would help. Throw a couple charges here to see where I'm at with the reloader 17. 
26.0, that's a little bit too much. Let me back it down a little bit. Zero, nope. I need to re zero. I don't get this precise if I'm reloading pistol. Um, but my goal for the 224 is to be able to uh, stretch its legs out a bit. So that's one of the things I'm doing and trying to work up these loads is get something that's consistent and accurate and that I can do some shooting at distance. So that was 25.5. So let me throw this one and see if we are close to 25.5. There's 25.7. I'll take it because I need 25.8. So let me trickle a tenth of a grain in here. And for me the biggest thing is consistency. I'm trying to get uh, you know good groups at a hundred yards for starters and then I need to check velocities like I said I didn't have a chronograph until just now. So I'm going to get these shot and see what their velocities are and go from there. Alright, so I'm weighing it in the beam scale now. I throw my next charge and get it trickled out. That one looks good. Go ahead and take that. Five point seven, twenty-five point eight. Go ahead and measure it on the beam and throw a charge. Well, I'm going to continue on with this reloader seventeen, and then once I get that done, we'll come back to the next step, which is getting the bullet seated. Okay, so the powder has all been measured and placed in the rounds. One thing I always like to do is to double check the cases and make sure I see powder in them because I certainly don't want to put a bullet on top of an empty case. I also thought I messed up because I write down what I'm loading on my board and I only had the 75 grains. I'm loading two bullets today. I'm going to be loading the Barnes Match Burner 85 grains bullets and I'm going to be putting them on the reloader 17 and then I'm also going to be reloading the Hornady 75 grain match bullets I'm putting them on the Varget. So I only had 75 grain written on my board and I would wrote written down the powder charge correctly of 25.8 but I didn't put it under the 85 grain bullet so I was concerned that I started loading for the wrong bullet um, but was not the case so that makes me happy so next thing we need to do is seat the bullet I'm going to use my Lee seating die go ahead and lower the ram the whole way and crank the die down until it touches the shell holder and then I give it about another half turn And then I tighten the lock ring down. So now that I've done that, I'm also going to back off the seating die a little bit because I don't know where I was last time I loaded. And I don't want to push these bullets down too quick to start with. So I want to seat this bullet and have a length of 1.76 inches from base to ogive. So the first one is always more time consuming because you have to, uh, you know, work it down to where you're getting the proper seating depth. So go ahead and start that. I should be 
Oh yeah, I'm way too deep. We're way too shallow. So I'm gonna drag that down a little bit. Give it about a half turn. That's one thing I learned from the Reloaders Network. Watching uh, the people reload there was that they gave their bullets, their shells a turn when they were seeding to try and I guess give it a more even seat. So I'm gonna start trying that and see if it makes a difference. So I'm gonna work my way down. I'm still not there yet. So let me get my caliper zeroed. Double check. And I am at 1.869. So I've got ways to go. that 1.84 going for 1.76 so I've still got a ways Went over the whole way. Still point one point seven nine. Point seven eight oh, we're getting close. Seven three seven two one point six nine zero oh, six eight. So we're getting close. I found that I'd rather err on the short side, and if I want one point seven six, it seems to be better to have one point seven five nine than one point six two. 1 1.7650 1.7590 I'll take that. So let's uh, try our next one and see what we get. I do measure every round just to verify. Well, that's 1.757, so that's a little shorter. Let me do one more. Seven five eight, so maybe I'll back off just a little bit. One point seven five nine five. I like that. Like I said, I push it in a bit, turn it, and then finish it. 0.76, oh, 5.95, that's perfect. All right, well, I'm going to finish the rest of these 75 grains, and then we'll move on to the 85 grains. 
Okay, so we've completed the 475 grains. Now we're moving on to the Barnes match burner, the 85 grains. So these I want at 1.78. So I'm going to back this off a bit and work my way down again. So that's 1.787, so we're close. Seven eight three. Point seven eight one. Still one point seven point seven eight five. Seven seven point seven seven eight five. So that'll work. Back it off just a hair and move the next one. So start it, turn it, finish it. It does seem to uh, just started doing that today. That does seem to produce a better more consistent seating depth. Back it off just a hair too much. Point seven eight or point seven eight oh. That'll work. Seven eight four. It's interesting. Still not quite there. Let me check my zero. Yep, zero is good. To be honest, maybe that explains it. That one's a little short. 1.775. Let's back that off. Still loading them a little short. I wonder what why that one was so took so much. That's interesting. That's why I measure every one. Seven eight two. Well, I'm gonna finish this, and then we'll come back for the final step. All right, the bullets are all seated. The last step of the process that I do is I put a crimp on them. I don't know if a lot of other people do or not, but it's just one thing that uh, I have been doing. So I'm going to get my crimping die out and get it set up. So I put the ram all the way up, take my crimping die, screw it down till it puts a little pressure on the ram. 
raise the ram and go another half turn. The other thing I do is I look at the top and make sure that the crimping jaws are together. And once that happens, I go ahead and tighten it down. So I'm going to take a look and see. You can kind of feel it crimp a little bit. Call that one good. Now I am going to have to take note when I shoot these 85 grains. There were two in the middle. They were a little shorter than when I liked them. So I'll have to make a note of that in my card that I put in my box so that uh, if something goes crazy when I'm doing that, when I'm shooting those, I know I might have an explanation for it. So I am going to finish crimping these and I'll follow up when I'm done with crimping. All right, so I have finished up with my crimping. I do crimp them because I shoot out of an AR platform. So I just like to have that little bit of extra tension around the neck, just in case. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is just my reloading process. I can't wait to get out and give these rounds a try. I have been getting some decent results with them. I'd like to see what their velocities are, and I really hope that they group. So, until next time, this is the Big Man's Outdoors. I appreciate you watching, and have fun outside.